you can't knock the basketball here. You just no. can't. It yeah. was fantastic. Now, you mentioned the Milwaukee Bucks and what they did, and it was so powerful to not just see them just basically say, you know what, we've had enough, and we don't have to have some big plan to just tell you we cannot play basketball right now. I thought that had a lot of power, and obviously it had an effect on athletes, not just around the country and other sports, but around the world. We saw golf, tennis, and sports being played in other countries, them do the same thing. But what do you think is going to be the lasting effect now that the bubble has popped? Truly, I, I think only time will tell. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't mean to be a pessimist about that, but I do think we've, we've heard folks in the, front, in, in the league office say, well, we expect things to get a little more, quote, back to normal. And what does normal mean? I understand that in that context, it means probably Black Lives Matter coming off of the court, maybe less of those messages being incorporated around the arena. But normal also means systemic oppression and police brutality. And so it is going to be in many ways up to the players to keep this conversation going and there time and time again we talk about how the oppressed it shouldn't be the responsibility of the oppressed to fix oppression mm -hmm. and so until not only do the owners follow the lead of the players but actually take their own initiative to do mm -hmm. something more i am skeptical of the lasting change it can cause. That being said, I think this was an important step for the NBA to take because if you look back to when Colin Kaepernick first kneeled uh, during the national anthem, the league sent out a memo saying, remember, mm -hmm. if you do this, there will be consequences. And that seems to be something that the league is moving away from. Mm -hmm. And so I think that in that way, this could be a, a first step, a domino, mm -hmm. but it will largely be up to not just the players, and it isn't the responsibility of these players necessarily. They are not activists. Mm -hmm. They are players who have taken up a cause that they care about, but it's there's going to be so much more work that needs to be done in the world, mm -hmm. in the United States, for lasting change to take place, but athletes may very well be catalysts for that, I think. Last night before uh, Rachel sat down with Anthony Davis and LeBron James, I actually walked with LeBron from his press conference to the spot on the court where they were setting up for the interview, and we, we chatted about a couple things. But one of them was, what happens when you don't have all these cameras around here, you don't have these media folks here asking you the questions about what, the way you want to enact social change? And he said that he's been anticipating this moment. He's already been reaching out to his team of advisors. And between now and November 3rd, as the election approaches and, and he has the more than a vote initiative, he said, I need to double down, if not triple down on my efforts. And, and certainly that won't necessarily affect long term change. But he's not walking away with I got my trophy. I got my finals MVP. Job's done. He recognizes that he has to continue to walk the walk uh, behind the message. I do think activism is contagious, right? That once people see other people doing it, it feels a little bit more comfortable, it feels a little bit less scary, it feels like you're a little bit less out there on their own. And I saw some of the younger players in the league really take leadership roles in this that I think are going to carry forward. So I hope maybe that's part of the lasting change. We'll have to see. To your point, the story is still being written. I feel lucky that we all got to cover it. Malika, the reason I keep reminding everyone how long you've been here is because it's such an accomplishment. It really is. The work that you in particular did here and the dedication that you and Melinda Adams, who was the producer who is here longest, um, putting into this is something that should be remarked on. So we're all very grateful. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.